This is the worst freeze damaged pipe I have ever seen. This thing is like, looks like a plant. It's like a piece of art. It has just exploded. Here's a look at all of that freeze damaged pipe. And what happened here, this is just a temporary fix. Um, but what happened here is the main line came down here, went down an elevation on the elbow to another elbow and underneath this concrete. Um, when we turned on the main line, the water was leaking out of this concrete right here and leaking out right here. And so because this concrete's not a very good insulator, that allowed this pipe to freeze and break and it actually froze and broke about 12 or 15 foot all the way over to here, giving us all of that damage. So got this temporary fix. We're gonna turn up the main line again, see if we've got any other leaks in the system. And if not, then we're gonna to have to dig underneath that concrete and put a new main line in. Turn back on the main line and we've got another leak here. So we were at a commercial property <clears throat> And there's really only two things that could have caused this or two things we could have done to prevent this. One is better winterization. There was obviously water in these pipes, which if it's 80% or more full in the pipe, there's not enough room for expansion when that freezes. Um, if it's buried deeper, that can prevent freezing, blowing out the pipe so there's a, you displace the water with air. And then also, if you could put a drain in there, which when we do our repairs, we'll add a drain here. And that way, if, even if it isn't winterized correctly, that will drain out over the course of time and will most likely prevent freezing in the winter time. So here we've got another freeze damage location. We'll have to dig this up, see how much damage pipe there is here. After digging here, I don't think this was freeze damage after all, but instead we've got garbage cans right here. This is where all the food trucks and everything come. So I'm thinking what happened here is possibly a truck came over here, drove on top of this head, which pushed this head down, which broke the lateral line which also broke the main line underneath it. You can see there's an electrical conduit here that's been repaired. Someone's been in here to repair this before. There also is an old T in here, a different style T, which is actually a better design. If you use a flex pipe, this usually will prevent this from breaking. This is almost a guaranteed way to break your pipe. All that force is always gonna go down into the pipe instead of a flex joint, which will help reduce that from breaking anything. But we've got a slip fix on the main line here. We've got a coupler. Um, I'm not worried about the lateral right now. I just want to test the main line, see if this is the last break in this zone um, or if there's other breaks that we have to find and, and fix. Another common issue with main line repair is the valves often get stuck on after they've run. And the reason for that is you can see we've got clean pipe here, very dirty pipe here, and all that mud that was right here gets pushed down that pipe. Even the smallest little tiny rock can clog a valve. The next time the controller turns on, it opens that valve and that little rock gets stuck in the valve and when the controller tells it to turn off the valve is mechanically stuck open and so it continues to water 24 7 after that until you turn off the main line so that's a very common issue um, so we are more than likely going to see some issues with uh, stuck valves on this system now this is repaired i have got the main line turned back on this is holding pressure no leaks so we're going to go in and test the controller and test our zones and hopefully we don't find any more breaks on this system Another contributing factor to this freeze damage is this pipe. You can see here we've got two one inch pieces of pipe next to each other. On the right, we've got a class 200 pipe. On the left, we've got a schedule 40 pipe. You can see that schedule 40 is about double the thickness. And when that freeze cracks, that's a lot easier to break and explode. And that caused a more volatile reaction. And uh, it's just easier to break this pipe. It's, it doesn't take much of an impact to break the lateral, to break the main line. Um, it, it's just a cheaper install. A lot of older systems use class 200. Most new systems will be used in schedule 40 unless you have a contractor that's cheaping out and trying to save money on pipe. But uh, we always use schedule 40 for that reason. Here's a look at how that flex pipe works. So here we've got a swing joint coming into the pipe and then we've got a rotor head on here. So if any movement up or down this head, it's not going to break this pipe or fittings. It's got flexibility in here. This is a pretty complicated system with this swing joint on here. This allows lots of flexibility and, and really in, any configuration you're looking for. Another option is to thread in one of these barbed elbows on both the head and on the pipe. And then you can use um, just a typical um, Rainbird flex pipe in order to get that head wherever it needs to be. Um, but this is a great option to prevent heads from breaking, to prevent pipes from breaking and uh, just gives you a lot of flexibility in that head install. It's a pretty outdated method to install the head directly on the pipe. It leads to a lot of broken components.